everybody. Hello. Welcome to Northgate Beyond, our podcast for the Northgate Church of God. My name is James. Uh, they call me Pastor James. This, As usual, I am with my buddy, best friend, yes. and senior pastor, Chad Kirk. That's me. Hello. That is he. So, uh, today, we are going to jump right in to how Jesus handles storms. Yes. How Jesus handles storms. First of all, welcome everybody. We thank yes. you for joining us. Appreciate <laughs> you. If you get a chance, like and subscribe. And like all of you guys who are not in America, like and subscribe and share because that would be amazing. Yes. That would be fantastic. That's awesome. Even if you are in America, I guess you can share it. But right. Specifically, you guys overseas, that would be just really cool. And let us know where you're from and, and you know, get in, uh, let us know how uh, we can better reach you if right. we're not doing a good job. So let us know. Anyway, how Jesus handles storms. Take it away, Chad. Yeah, that was last week's sermon, uh, how Jesus handles storms. And uh, I just felt led uh, to talk about how, one of the, to me, one of the big misconceptions about Christianity is that once you become a Christian, your life becomes perfect. And All everything's right. peachy keen, yeah. and there's never any problems, which isn't the truth. Uh, no, the truth is that everybody has battles, and storms are just a symbol of bad problems, bad times, troubles that mm-hmm. we go through. And as Christians, we need to know that just because we're going through something hard doesn't mean that God has forsaken us, or he's turned his back on us, or he's forgotten us, right. that he's there the whole time, and he knows how to handle storms. So that's what we talked about this past week, uh, cool. using three different parts of scripture that talk about storms and how the lord handled them so nice that's what we're talking about today i missed the whole thing yeah you were cooking uh, serving i was getting ready to serve and cutting up briskets yeah that we made the day before or we smoked the day before delicious yes but i did i missed the whole sermon i was in there getting ready so (laughs) (laughs) i was like you know what i'm gonna cut for a little while and get stuff ready and then i'm gonna jump in there and get to the meat of it and uh it just never stopped. There's just always something else to get ready. Oh, yeah. So it got kind of busy, but <clears throat> that sounds like that could be something we could talk about today. Yes. All right. Well, what scripture did you use, and what was your what was your first point? Okay. Well, um, I used three different passages of scripture, but I'll just go through them like one at a time, and we'll talk about them as I go. Okay. But uh, the first scripture I used for reference is Luke eight twenty three through 25 which is basically the story about when the disciples and Jesus are on a boat and they're sailing uh, and Jesus is asleep in the boat. My favorite uh, freak out story in all of scripture, I think. Yes. Like my favorite response, like just straight sleeping. Exactly. I mean, for fishermen to be scared that they're going to die. Right. That has to have been one whale of a ta- like one whale yes. of a storm. Oh yeah! Like, could you imagine what that was like? I can't fathom. No. Like, I've I've hit some rough patches and see like well, crossing on ferries and stuff like that up in Alaska. And yeah. I tell you, that is some gnarly stuff. Those twenty foot swells ain't no joke. Yeah. <laughs> and I am no fisherman. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm the guy in the corner, green as all get out, <laughs> trying my best to hold everything down. Uh, but. I can't imagine how bad that must have been for fishermen to be scared. Yeah, because they're scared. And a carpenter, yeah, is asleep. <laughs> yeah, and on the couch or yeah, you know, and, 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 and on the bed. Just yeah, like, oh, so out. Jesus is napping essentially. Yeah, and perfect response. The Why storm so is getting worried? worse, and <laughs> they're taking on the scripture says they're taking on water. Right, like that's really scary. I mean, it's one thing to be in a storm, but when you're yeah. looking around, like. My ankles are wet because there's water in here. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. And Jesus is sleeping. Boats are supposed to be on water, not water yeah. in the boat. Yeah. So, of course, they panic, and they go, and they're like, Lord, we're going down. Don't you yeah. even care? Don't you even care? We're yeah. going to die. We're going to die. And, of course, uh, that's the great story where Jesus gets up, and he goes out to the top of the boat, and he says, peace, be still. Yeah. And everything stops <laughs> immediately. Yeah. And... uh. And then they have this great revelation of who, who is, is this, this guy that Even the seas and the yeah, winds obey <laughs> obey him when he talks they just listen yeah uh, but it brings to me to mind like when we're going through our storms in life 
we got to always remember that storms don't trouble Jesus. Right. They don't right. bother him mm-hmm. like they bother us. A lot of times we think we've got to convince God of just how bad it is. When yeah. he understands, yeah. but he's just not troubled. No, you don't get it, Lord. Yeah. This is unique. Yeah. yeah. And and when we pray, we almost are trying to convince the Lord that, Lord, oh, yeah. you need to take this seriously. This, yeah. You may not be paying attention yeah. right now, but I'm about to get your attention <laughs> right. real quick. Uh, which is not a good way to handle storms. Not at all. It's to trust that or he knows. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. And it's, he's not troubled, which in turn should keep us not troubled yeah. at storms. Yeah. yeah. Because he's on the boat. He's there. You know, and all he needs to do is speak a word. Um, yeah. But then that brought me to the second point that I made about that scripture was you have to always remember that Jesus can control what seems uncontrollable. Yeah. To those men, there's no way that they could control that storm. Yeah. There's no way they could just make it stop. Yeah. But and they're not just they're not just scared. This is the point right. like, like keeps bringing me back to it. They're not just in the middle of something. Mm-hmm. That they've never, like, they're not just in the middle of something. They're in the middle of something they have experience in. Sure. Like, we've, they've lived this life. Right. They're fishermen. It's what they do. Right. For a living. And still, they're in a place where, you know, this, it's, it's, it's un, uh, unnatural for them. It's like, right. it's still, we have a lot of experience in this, but still, like, I'm telling you, this is a problem. Right. Right. It's not like. We see storms where we're like, Lord, I don't know where to turn. I don't know where. Exactly. I don't even know where to begin. Right. Like, they know a lot about what's happening. Yes. ship is sinking. It's taking, it's too violent, and there's taking on water, and right. eventually this boat's going to turn upside down. Right. And we're going to be stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. Right. So, I'm telling you, Lord. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I know from experience this is a bad place to be. Right. Like, I know we, we feel like that a lot, though. Oh, like, Yeah. I, I know that I feel that way. Like, Lord, I know misery. Like, I, misery is my company, and right. I get it. And I know, Lord, and I don't don't know if you understand. Like, sure. You know, <laughs> well, and like, I'm I think, talking from experience. This is a problem. Yeah, and everyone has their breaking point. Sure. I mean, because a storm to one person may be something. Oh, I deal with that every day. Yeah. To another person. Oh, yeah. uh, well, that's not a storm. Yeah, that's you know I did that yesterday. Exactly. So everybody's storms are going to be different, and how we handle them. But you're right. Uh, these men had been through rough weather before but they're they're looking at something that in their own mind they're like we're just gotta hold on and 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 hopefully right. no, yeah, not we're die we're going to die yeah uh, like, we're pretty much it's, this is gonna happen yeah like, we're don't you care yeah like you're sleeping right and we're about to like we're all gonna die, die. in this really embarrassing yeah. way <laughs> like don't you even care exactly and but Jesus gets up, and with a few words, yeah. he controls the uncontrollable. Yeah. He makes it stop. Mm-hmm. And when we're going through our battles and struggles and dark times, we need to remember that I can't control this, but I do serve one who can. Yeah. And he can control everything. Yeah. He, can, he can control the outcome, no matter how bad it looks or how severe it gets or how the how scared I am of like, I've never been here before God. And this is scary. Uh, he has the ability to control what I can't. Mm -hmm. And it's comforting in a storm, in a, in a, in a dark place, in a time of struggle, when you realize that, you know, what am I going to do? I, I, this, I know how much I make and I know how much my bills are and I'm going to come up short. I can't control that. There's no way I can just magically make, right. No, but we have a God who can, or, you know, I've just been diagnosed with something crazy that I don't know how to fix it. I can't do it, but yeah. we serve a God who can, That's you right. know, uh, and it should be comfort to us through the storm. And so sometimes Jesus will calm the storm. And that's what he did in that scenario. He yeah. just calmed the storm. He was like, OK, yeah. shut up, storm. Be quiet. And yeah. in my mind, I think Jesus just went and finished his nap. I yeah. think it, that's the way I like to finish yeah. the story in my own He's head. Done talking, yeah, they're amazed. He walks back downstairs, yeah. like, oh, where was I? There was a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go back to sleep now. Um, uh, so that was the first storm that I talked about on Sunday. Uh, that and brought out those points that you know you got to remember that storms don't bother him and that he can control anything that's that right. comes your way. Yeah. Um, The second storm story that I talked about is found in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 31. 
Um, and this is, of course, the infamous story of Jesus walking on the water. Yeah. Um, he had just done many signs and miracles and wonders and, and dealing with the masses. But then he tells his disciples, hey, listen, you guys get in the boat and you guys just go over to the other side. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll meet you over there. Go over to the other side. I got to get alone with the father because he goes and goes by himself. And and they're like, OK, Lord, we're going to get in the boat. We're going to do what you say. You know, mm -hmm. so they take off well they get out in the middle they're out in the middle and that's one thing i love about when we read it it says they were way far away from the shore so it wasn't like they were a couple feet from the shore they were out in the middle right and here comes a storm all of a sudden the wind picks up and the waves are crashing and things are there well this time jesus isn't napping downstairs yeah so all of a sudden and the scripture says at three in the morning so that's a real yeah rare time yeah. Uh, but at three in the morning, they all of a sudden see something walking their way on top of the water, on top of these waves and all top of this stuff. And of course, they're flipping out because yeah. they're like, that's a ghost. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it's a what ghost. Yeah. But the Lord has to calm down and says, no, I'm not a ghost. It's me. Hello. Hey. You know, it's Hello. me. <laughs> uh, and, you know me. And I love Peter's attitude. Peter yeah. steps up and he's like, hey, if it is you, prove it. Yeah. Let me walk out there to you. Uh -huh. You know. And of course Jesus grants it. He's like, sure, come on out. All right, come on you out. Know, and walk. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and the storm's still going. You know. It, it's not like it's a peaceful calm and Jesus is out there on the no, it's the storm's still going. The waves are still crashing, the wind is still blowing. Yeah. You know, and here Peter gets out and he's doing great. He's walking. Yay. You know. Yeah. And then uh <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he stops, and he stops focusing on the Lord and yeah. starts looking at the waves, and he starts looking at the wind, and he starts looking at everything else and starts to panic a little bit, and then he immediately sinks. Yeah. And then he screams, Lord, yeah. help me, I'm drowning. Yeah. You know, you know, help me, help me. I'm going down. And, and of course, the Bible says, you know, he, uh, Jesus picks him back up, and, uh, and, the, and I love the Bible says immediately he picked him back up, but then Jesus says to him, uh, while he's picking him up, he's not coddling him. He picks him up and he says, "So why did you have so little faith?" Yeah, like immediately. You you would think like that would be a buddy moment, right? Like Jesus would pick him up and be like, "It's I mean, okay, that was pretty Peter." Cool for a little while, right? Yeah, you know. No, he's like, "Why did you have so little faith? Why did you doubt me?" Right. And and it brings me to the points that I, I made on Sunday about the the storm is you have to always remember that. Even when it feels like Jesus is far away, like we know we're here, and, and sometimes it feels like Jesus is so far away. Right. So far away. He's already walking in your storm. Yeah. He's already there. Because for him to get that far away and to be there at this precise moment when they needed him, yeah. he was already walking in the storm long before they started panicking over it. Yeah. He was already in it. And... To me, it's comforting to us that when we're going through our storms, that he's already there. He's already in the midst of it. Yeah. And sometimes I think we feel like, God, are you even listening? Mm -hmm. Are you even, you even paying attention to my life right now? You know, we feel like he's so far away, like he's somewhere beyond the stars up there just hanging out. Yeah. And we're like, man, I really need you right here. But he is there's there. There's no delay. There's no delay yeah. in the relief. Yeah. When... That exactly. time comes when it is your time to to get to that next stage right. or to get over it or whatever it is uh, to get past. Like there's no delay. He's right. there. He he's done there. been in it with you. Like you right. Know, he done been there exactly. Like, and he's been there waiting on you. you yeah. Know? And it's usually we have to get our mind in the right place before God can uh, let us see where we can. Oh yeah. Okay. And then get through something, whether it's right. mental or anguish or some kind of. You know, most of our storms are. Yeah. Typically, it's mentally or spiritually or something oh, like yeah. that. Rarely is it uh, physically, but it does happen, of right. course. And but sometimes the victory is just us trying to get to his way of thinking for right. a second. You know, like him trying to get us there. And but there's no delay. I mean, right. That's the main point. Like even yeah, physical healing or physical needs or you know whatever it is. Like you were talking about financial. Yeah. There's no delay. Right. It's not like post-dated checks or anything. I mean, right. He's already been in it, already <laughs> been working on exactly. a way out. So, yeah. yeah. I love it. That's um, a great, great analogy. So, so even though he's far away, he feels like there. But then the second part is you have to always remember that in every storm, there's an opportunity to experience Jesus 
in a way you haven't before. Right. Up until this point, they already know that he can speak to winds and waves and calm them. Mm -hmm. Like, we know he can talk to the winds and waves and talk. Up until this point, they didn't know he could walk on water. Right. Water into wine. Right. Delivering, you know, you know casting out demons, delivering people, healing the blind. Yeah. That's cool. But that's all, like, on land. Exactly. Well, now they notice, oh, yeah. he can walk on water, too. He's literally walking on calm water. water. And, okay. And I think... In our storms, if we would look at them differently as, yeah, this is going to be hard, it's going to be rough, it's going to maybe be miserable for a while, but if I can just, like you said, bring myself around mentally to realize that this is an opportunity for me to see a part of Jesus that I haven't seen yet, to see a part of his power, to see a part of his mercy, his grace right. that I haven't experienced yet, and yeah. I'm just going to see what he's going to do because... Every storm is an opportunity to see him in a different way and to yeah. reveal something about him that we didn't know before. And that's always an amazing thing. Uh, so uh, that's always something to look for is can yeah. I see Jesus in this in a way I haven't seen him before? And we also have to remember Peter's part in it that yeah. when in your middle of your storm, it's always important to focus on Jesus, not on the circumstances, not on the circumstances. around you. Yeah. Because if you focus on the circumstances, you're going to sink. Yeah. Emotionally, spiritually, spiritually yeah. sink. It's just going to go downhill. Yeah. Quick. E even physically. Yeah. You can start, make yourself sick, really, if you sure get can. to a place of despair. It affects you physically. You always got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the prize. Yeah. In the middle of your storm. It's a very easy point to learn from that. Like, keep my eyes on Jesus and everything will be good. Um, and also, you got to remember that in my mind, when I see this scene, I'm seeing these waves, right, waves. Mm -hmm. And I can just, in my mind, picture Jesus is walking on water. But I also, I'm almost seeing like bobbing up and down. Because as the wave goes up, he's walking on top. And as the yep. wave goes up, he's walking. And so he's walking, and the waves are crashing, and he's still just like kind <clears> of <throat> bobbing up and down. Not because he's floating, because he's on top. Yeah. And to me... It lets me know I always need to remember that no matter how big my problem gets, Jesus is always on top of it. Yeah. That there's never going to be a problem so big that it overtakes him. Mm -hmm. He's always on top of it. He's always above it. Like at the height of my biggest problem is he's already on top. He's already above it. And he's already, you know, conquering it yeah. for me. Yeah. And I don't have to worry uh, because... Sometimes we think, well, we get into a mode of we pray for the little things. We pray for little things like, well, God, you can handle this. You know, protect my family, protect my marriage, protect Susie, you know, whatever. Protect, you know, little John or whatever, whoever, sure. you know. We, we say this stuff, but then when things get really big and really intense, right. we begin to panic. And we're like, oh, man, this is a big problem, Lord. Well, yeah. we trusted him with these little things. The little ones are all right, but this is big. Yeah, but this is really big. Yeah. And, and I got to really do something here, God. No, you don't. <laughs> he He's already on top. Yeah. And just trust him that no matter how big the wave gets, he's still going to be on top of it. Yeah. So you don't have to panic. You know, and like you said, those things can be scary. You know, those big crashing waves. Yeah. Uh, and so, so sometimes Jesus calms the storm. Sometimes he calms us mm -hmm. in the midst of the storm. And not, last little note on this one that I want to bring out is there's always something to be learned. Learned? Yeah. Taught? Learned. There you go. <laughs> I don't want to get too country. Learned. Um, Learned. Yeah. yeah. There's always something to learn in a storm. And if you listen, Jesus will tell you. As he's saving you from the storm, he's going to tell you mm -hmm. this is how you can improve. Because as soon as he grabbed Peter, mm -hmm. as soon as he grabbed his hand, he's pulling him up out of the water and... I can just picture in my mind, he's pulling him out of the water, and as soon as Peter kind of looks at him, Jesus didn't say, it's okay, buddy, I love you, I'm right here. Yeah. No, he yeah, said, yeah, yeah. why did you doubt? Yeah. That was the first thing out of mm -hmm. his mouth. Why did you doubt me? Why did you doubt me? You, How many times did yeah. you see me do something amazing? Yeah. Why are you still doubting me? Yeah, why do you doubt? And a lot of times in our storms, Jesus is there to save us. He's there, but he's also there to teach us. Mm -hmm. He's also there to teach us a lesson. Like, hey, you know... It didn't have to get to this point. Mm -hmm. If you had obeyed me in this, this, and this back here, 
this situation we're doing right now would be a whole lot better. And it's not because God is angry with us. It's because mm-hmm. he loves us and he wants us to learn. He wants us to grow mm-hmm. and use every opportunity to grow in him. Yeah. So a lot of times when we're looking for that uh, overwhelming hug from God, it's not that he won't ever give it, but a lot of times God's like, okay, well, let's sit down and talk about this yeah. now. Yeah. Let's see what we did and mm-hmm. let's learn from this. You know I got it. Mm-hmm. Trust me next time. Yeah. Trust me when we're in the pickle, you know, that you don't fall apart on me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, think about, like, how many times he's asked questions mm-hmm. of men. Yeah. You know, in in his, in God's almightiness. Yes. Has, like, ha- had to ask, why? Right. Why don't you believe you know what i mean like yeah. <laughs> think about him in, in the in the desert and with moses and with the the children of israel like all of them of course how many times they got into it uh or didn't do anything didn't do it right right and how many times he had to ask like I, i'm just gonna start over i'm just right. gonna start over forget <laughs> it like how many times he had to ask like why why have you st- why are you still struggling with exactly. this? exactly and I, I don't think he's out of frustration right, right? So I don't think it was like, that's how we would do it. Right. Like how do, you, your kid comes up and does something ridiculous, yeah. you know, or says something just <laughs> how many what? times? Yeah. <laughs> I played, we played a, in youth group last night. We, we played, would you rather? Mm-hmm. And it's silly questions. You know, would you rather be this superhero or that one? Would right. Would you rather sure. run fast or run, be strong? And uh, anyway, it just goes on and on. And I, 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 I kick myself every time we play because when my son answers the questions, I just I sit back and I'm like in awe <laughs> of like disappointment. <laughs> like I can't. What is why would wrong you do that? with you? Yeah. <laughs> like why would you prefer to live alone or never be married than to marry a person you just like? The question was like, would yeah. you rather marry someone you just met? Oh, okay. Or marry a stranger or never be married at all? And right. He's like never be married at all. No family, no kids, no siblings, no nothing. I would be by myself. Like, what is wrong <laughs> with you? Like, or, like a mar- part of it, like, because it makes me so insecure. Yeah. And I'm thinking, like, what's wrong with me? Like, what's exactly. wrong with my house, man? Why you? Right. But anyway, like how we act toward our kids. And it's like, I don't think God is looking at it that way. But it, it also helps. It can help us catch a glimpse. Yes. The reason we are so astounded by, like, how, how like, just wrong our kids get it. Right. It's because we know they can do it right. Exactly. So it's like, it's not like Jesus was... Like I, I, I like how many times did he have to ask his own disciples? You know, yes. Why do Why don't you believe? Right. Why don't you believe me? I asked him when he told us, "Peace be still." He yes. still turned around. Like, yeah. Why don't you believe? Exactly. Go ye of oh, little ye faith. Little faith. Like yeah. why don't you get this already? Right. Anyway, I'm going back to bed. Leave me alone. <laughs> exactly. You know? You know? Whatever he said after that, I, right. I really want to be that part. <laughs> Who is this man that even? What do you, What do you mean? Who am I? Yeah. Like, exactly. You know, you've been here since day one, bro. Right. So I, I think like it's not because he's uh, not because he's angry because we know God doesn't w- operate like that. He gets angry at sin. He gets angry at stuff. I know, right? Uh, but it's a righteous anger, and it's something that we can't comprehend. You exactly. Know, like, we can't we can't get to that level, right? Because it's all based in sin for us, you know. But right. anyway, but I think Jesus was is, is astounded, especially at Peter. Like Peter was this guy, yes. yeah, uh, one of the first. Yeah, and and I just you know the guys that he brought on like follow me and he's like yes i'll do that and he was so passionate about everything and and i think he just got to him it's like not to ask the question you know uh, to make him feel uh like to make him feel less or feel worse about it it was more or less like you know you can i know you can do it exactly yeah but i'm gonna ask this question so that you ask it next time why don't you believe exactly like why don't you do it because i'm telling Mm -hmm. you right now I made you to do it. You right. Know, it's like exactly. it's like God telling us. We see this question through our scripture so many times. Like, why don't you believe? Or why right. are you? Why aren't you do? Why are you doing this? Why are you hiding from me? You know, Adam right. and Eve. Like, exactly. why? <clears throat> why are these things happening? It's not that he doesn't know the answer. Yeah. It's just to say, like, but you were created for the opposite of this. Exactly. You know, you were created to live by faith, Peter. Yeah. You were created to for this moment right here. You're going to be Peter. This oh, church yeah. is going to go on your back. Like exactly. it's going to get started because of the, the actions. Like right. You're going to get to a point where this is all going to make sense. But I'm going to ask you now, why don't you believe? You know, right. like because you were made different. And yeah. I think that's like that's a good lesson for us. You know, mm-hmm. and when we feel like that, when we feel at our lowest or whatever, and, and like yeah. we could ask ourselves and let the scripture just let the word of God speak to us. Like why don't you believe? Yeah. Because we were made. So much better than this, yes, you know. Absolutely. And we're at our lowest, and we're our least amount of faith. I think God's looking at us like, "Why don't you believe?" Right. Well, let's get to the bottom of it because 
I made you so that you could. Yeah. I made you so that, you know, this is the better path and you're choosing a different one. Ask yourself why. Right. So that we can get you back on the right one because you can do this. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. Like, we can put our faith in God. We choose not to. And right. I think the big question God's asking, why? Yeah, why? I haven't I proven myself time and time <laughs> yeah. again? And it's like, it's like how quickly we forget. Oh, yeah. And like looking at Peter, Jesus must have thought like, how many miracles have I performed with you standing exactly. right next to me? And then you talking at the campfire afterwards, bragging right. about how amazing it was. And then the time you went out two by two and when all yeah. this other stuff happened. And now here you are. Right. You're afraid of waves and I'm standing on top of them. Exactly. What are you doing? Right. Why don't you believe? <laughs> exactly. You know? You can do this, bro. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. I think about that a lot. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But no, it's 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 a really important thing to learn that through our storms, we can learn. We can yeah. grow. There's we so grow. much to, to um, think about in the middle of those things. And then the the last storm that I talked about on Sunday um, was uh, one where the Lord was involved, not physically like in, in his flesh form. Um uh, because this happened in the book of Acts, but it's in Acts chapter 27, verse 18 through 44. Now, that's a big chunk of scripture. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to give you the highlight notes on it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, Paul is a prisoner. <laughs> By the time we read it out loud, yeah. it's going to be 30 minutes in, and exactly. it's going to get lost. Um, no. <laughs> but uh, at this time, Paul is a prisoner, mm-hmm. and uh, he's on his way to Rome. And that's where essentially he's got to go. Right. He's, he's going to go appear at, in, before Caesar. There you um, go. Okay. Uh, because he was a Roman citizen. But he's on this ship of prisoners. That's how they carted him from one place to the other. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, God had told Paul, like, listen, there's going to be trouble. You shouldn't go. Well, Paul tried to warn him and say, hey, we shouldn't leave Crete. It's going to get stormy out there. Yeah. We should stay right here and bunker down for a few days, and then it'll be all right. Of course, he's a prisoner. They didn't care what he had to say. Yeah. They're like, whatever, get on the boat. We're Romans. So they get on the boat, and they take off. And, of course, they run into a storm. Uh, but before they get into the heat of the storm, an angel appears to Paul and says, Paul, mm-hmm. don't worry. Don't be afraid. No one is going to die as long as they're on the ship. Now, the ship will wreck, mm-hmm. and it will be broken. But And he gives this to Paul. He says, but you must appear in rome right you know that's a promise mm-hmm. that the angel said you got it. he's like so just let everybody know paul everything's gonna be all right the boat's gonna go down it's gonna sink yeah but everybody's gonna live and everything's gonna be all right, right. so paul's like all right so uh they go the storm starts raging paul tells them it's gonna be okay we just gotta stay in the storm they're still ignoring him they're throwing stuff off trying to lighten the load or yeah. whatever yeah and uh and the and the scripture says that this storm was it, it was in day fourteen, so this storm had been Two going weeks. for fourteen days Woo. straight. That's a massive storm. My goodness! Forget and they're that. in the, yeah, and they're in the middle of this. And on the fourteenth day, Paul says, "Listen, I've already told you. God says it's going to be okay." But he's like, "I've watched you guys for fourteen days. You've been so worried." He's like, "You haven't even eaten." He's like, "You need to eat something. Yeah, you need to eat something." Uh, and which cracks me up because I think Paul's just over there eating sandwiches the I whole time. Imagine, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's all right, guys. You know, yeah. Trust me, guys. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Uh, but it's like you guys need to eat. <laughs> and, uh, it's it's humorous, but it, yeah. when you think about, it, but he's like, you need to eat. And so Paul gets food together and he br- prays and he thanks God for the food and he hands it out and they, and the soldiers are still you know flipping out and they're like. Well, we're going to get, they had like a little escape, like boat, you know, like a lifeboat. Yeah. Uh, And Paul sees them starting to lower it down like they're going to get off. And Paul says, no, listen, God said that you have to stay on the boat if you're going to live. Right. If you jump off, you're going to die. Yeah. You got to stay on the boat. And because they trusted Paul by this point, they were like, okay, we'll stay on the boat. So they start heaving off more things, and then they start putting lines down the water, saying, well, we're at 120 feet. Oh, we're at 90 feet. We're getting closer and closer to the side, you know, and they're scared. And Paul's like, it's okay. It's okay. The boat's going to sink. It's going to sink. It's going to be all right. It's going to be fine. Well, of course, it shatters against the rocks. It busts into pieces. um, And the the last scripture in verse 44, it says, everybody 
just grabbed parts of the boat, like different planks and stuff that were apart, uh-huh. and they held on to them, and they, uh, through the storm, they just floated and held on to that, and then yeah. they got onto the shore, and everyone lived. Right. Right? So, it's a different type of storm. Jesus isn't asleep in the boat. Jesus ain't walking on the water. Right. But it speaks a lot to us today because we got to remember that uh, God has made us promises to get us through our storms. Yeah. Yep. He made pa- Paul promise. The reason why Paul could be relaxed through that whole 14-day storm is because he had a promise. I got to mm-hmm. go to Rome, and God's going to get me to Rome because I got to. Yeah. He so, said I had to, so I got to go. Even if the boat goes down, I'm going to live, yeah. and I got to go to Rome. That's what Paul, you know, Paul yep. was holding on to that. Well, we have the Bible that's full of promises, mm-hmm. promises that we love to quote, but a lot of times we don't live by. Like, no weapon formed against me will prosper, and, you know, uh, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. You know, you know he'll make yeah. the crooked places straight. You know, we, we talk about all of these things and these promises mm-hmm. that God has given to us through his word. But a lot of times in the middle of the storm, we forget them. Right. And we're just like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? We're going down. You know, it, it's been two weeks, Lord, and I haven't heard anything from you. You know, yeah. what, what am I going to do? You know, well, that's when you hold on to the promise. Mm-hmm. You hold on to the promises of God to get you through the storm. Uh, because not every storm is going to be a miraculous, like, peace be still moment or right. a walking on water moment. It may be God just saying, hey, I gave you a promise. Hold on to it. I gave you my word. Put yeah. faith in it. Yeah. Hold on to it and get you through your storm. Uh, so Paul held on to the promise to guide him through the storm. Also, Paul had to remind them that it's vital in the middle of your storm to be obedient. Yeah. Because if they would have disobeyed and said, Paul, the boat is going down and we're going to get on this little boat and we're going to get out of here. Everybody who got on that boat would have died. Yep. Because God said, tell everybody, stay on the ship. Yeah. And yeah. they'll... And they'll Okay, well, a lot of times when people and Christians, I mean, let's be honest, we're, we're the, the, the biggest culprits a lot of times, mm-hmm. is it's easy to be, obey God, and it's easy to walk the straight and narrow when everything's going good. Yeah. But the moment it gets shaky, the moment it gets rocky, the moment the storm comes, mm-hmm. we abandon our principles, we abandon our routines, we abandon all the things we do because we're just scared. Right. But I mean, in the middle, abandon the boat altogether. Exactly. In some cases. Absolutely. And, and we got to learn to be obedient. And mm-hmm. it's vital in the middle of storms to be obedient. How many times have we seen church folk, when life gets hard and rough, they the first thing they do is they stop coming to church. Yeah. They they just disappear. Yeah. And just think, fall off the boat altogether. Yeah. Just quit coming. Why would you do that? Yep. That's the time you need to buckle down in your obedience to get you through the storm. Yeah. Uh, stay on the boat, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it may go do down. Do not abandon ship. But you'll be all right. Yeah. Um, so obedience is a big part of it. And then Thanksgiving is a big part of it. In the middle of that thing, Paul's in there giving thanks for sandwiches yeah. in the middle of the storm. Yeah. And... A two-week storm. Yeah, a yeah. two-week storm. And thanking God. Like, thank you, God, for this bread. Thank you for this, yeah. you know. Thank you for this cheese sandwich. Exactly. I love it. And how often when we get into storms, the first thing that stops is Thanksgiving. We start to complain. Yeah. Uh, why are you doing this? Why is this, why is, why is this so rocky? Why mm-hmm. is it so bumpy? Why, why can't everything just go smooth, God? You know, instead of doing that, maybe we should focus on the blessings we do have and yeah. just give him thanks. Yeah. If, you know. Yeah. Even at our worst, we still have a whole lot to be thankful for. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so uh, always remember to be obedient. Always remember to give thanks. And uh, and the last but not least thing that I wanted to talk about is when it was all said and done, the ship went down, but the ship broke apart. And it broke apart in a way where everybody had a piece to grab onto yeah. and get them to the shore. Yeah. So... In the middle of your storm, it may feel like life's falling apart. It may feel like like everything's coming apart at the seams. Mm -hmm. But if you'll look, God always has something for you to hold on to. Always gives you something to hold on to. Right. Uh, Like it could be a promise, or it could be your favorite scripture, or it could it could just be a faithful friend. It could Mm -hmm. just be another Christian. It could be some. It it could be your church. It could be your pastor. Whoever. But God's always going to bring something in the middle of your storm for you to hold on to. Right. It's going to get you safely through it. Yeah. Um, he's never just going to abandon you and be like, you're on your own. You mm-hmm. know, hope you make it. 
that's not our God. God's always going to give us something to hold on to. Right. And he gave all these people, these prisoners and these soldiers, gave them something to hold on to so they could float to shore and survive the storm, just like God said it was going to happen. Yeah. Uh, so, Stay on the boat. Yeah. Stay on the boat. So sometimes God calms the storm. Sometimes he calms us in the middle of the storm. And then sometimes God allows our faith, obedience, and his promise to carry you through the storm. Yeah. And one of those three ways are going to happen. Mm-hmm. No matter how the storm comes, if you've got your faith in the Lord and and you do it the way the Lord's asking you to do it in the word uh, to apply these things, you're going to make it through. And there's no storm too big that God can't handle. Right. And and that was the main message of of this week to our church and hopefully you where you're listening is, you know, you can make it. Mm-hmm. Don't give up. Don't jump ship. Look for Jesus. He's out there walking. He, you know, it, it, it's you're going to make it. it right. It's not going to be. It's not going to be the end of your story. That's it. You know. Yeah. Doesn't have to be. Right. And stay on a boat. And you know, stay on task. Yeah. And you know, stay where you know you're supposed to be. The Lord comes through every time. Every time. All right. Well. That's uh, that's pretty much the gist of the message on Sunday. Mm-hmm. We wanted to dive a little bit deeper, but we wanted to leave a little bit of time so that we could pray for our listeners, and we wanted to uh, say a quick prayer for you guys. Yes. And uh, just give you a chance to, to realize that you're not alone, and we're here with you. And there's a lot of fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that are with you, here with you, uh, to believe and stand with you in faith that God is in control. And yes. Whenever you pray that prayer, whenever you pray that God is in control, whenever you say that out loud, whenever you claim that, just know that there's so many, countless others who are standing in faith with you to claim the same thing. God's in control, and it's not too late to turn it around. It's not too late to uh, to right the ship, as it were, and to calm right. the storm or to, to find yourself in the right place again. So, uh, Pastor, let's. Or why don't you pray for us and uh, sure. uh, pray for everybody and give everybody a chance to... So just claim it with us. Yeah, well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, uh, we've been talking about storms today, and I know you know how to handle every storm. And Lord, wherever this podcast goes, Lord, someone may be listening right now who is going through the biggest storm they've ever faced in life. And God, we just join our faith with theirs. And we know that you walk the water still, and yet you're still in the middle of the storm, and the storm still obeys your voice. God, and there's still promises for us to hold on to. We know these things, and we just claim those things for every person who's battling a storm right now. We just join our faith with theirs, wherever they are on the world, God, uh, whatever country, God, whatever town they're in. God, we just join our faith with them and just ask you to mend their problems and and see them through their storms. Let them learn their lessons. Let them see you in in a more amazing light than they ever had before. God, and remind them that this storm will pass and that there's hope on the other side uh, and there's always an answer in you for no matter what we're going through. So, Father, bless them, bless us, God, and, and, and put your hand upon this podcast and let it go to every person, Lord, that it can, that needs to hear that there's hope in the middle of their storm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Well, and also, if for some reason this is your first time listening, first time getting around, and you haven't made the decision to make Christ your king and uh, to uh, become a Christian right. and to become a disciple of Christ, uh, we also want to give that opportunity right now. Uh, yeah. There's no sense in waiting for any longer. There's no sense in waiting for tomorrow. There's no sense in waiting until you get it all right, because guess exactly. what, brother or sister? It ain't going to happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, just get Give up on the perfection train for now, uh, yes. on your, in your eyes, and mm-hmm. uh, let's give a heart to Christ. Let's give a heart to Him, and know that uh, you know what He's going to see us through. Right. And uh, if we give Him everything, if we become His disciple, if we just follow after Him with everything you got, everything's going to make sense. I promise. And uh, yes, I was one very confused and messed up person, and then I gave my heart to the Lord. And he made sense of it all. And right. I didn't think that was possible. I didn't think that was uh, a thing that was going to happen in my lifetime. And I just resigned to the fact that everything was going to be confusing. I was going to be confused and lost, and I was going to be misunderstood. And uh, I gave my heart to him, and he he transformed my heart, Mm -hmm. and he transformed my outlook. And he can do it for you today, right now. And there's no sense in waiting. So 
uh, if you want to give your heart, if you just want to want to pray with us real quick, we want to pray with you. And uh, it's it's a simple prayer, but it's a big meaning and it's a commitment for life. And uh, but if you'll do if you'll do this right now, uh, we promise if you'll give your heart to the Lord, He's going to make it worth your while. I mean, Amen. He always does. And he'll yeah. make things right again. So. Why don't you pray with us real quick? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the chance we have to be here. And we want to lift up those who want to give their hearts to you today. And we just ask that you would hear them. And if they would repeat after me, Lord, that you would just hear their prayer. You come into their hearts and that you would uh, just help them from this day forward. And if you guys would just repeat after me, Father, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. And I just ask you, would you come into my life that you would save me? And that you would give me purpose. I will be your disciple. I will follow you the rest of the days of my life. And I pray that you would forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my past. Lord, and help me to live for today. And uh, to live secure in tomorrow. We thank you, Lord. We care for give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, guys. If you are around Victoria... And the 77904 area code representing that 904. Yeah. <laughs> if you're anywhere near here, we'd love to have you come visit us. We're at 206 Broadmoor, Victoria, Texas. Or you can listen to us anytime. Uh, we're on YouTube. Yes. We post live every single Sunday. Come join us live. It'd be great. We'd love to have you. And uh, we also have uh, different avenues. But read the description. Get in the description of this of this podcast. And we're going to have some links for you. So tap on any one of those. And I'm sure... You can find us in various different ways, and we'd yep. love to interact with you. So drop us a line somehow, some way, and any way that is available to you, and uh, we will do our best to get back to you if that's what you want. We love you guys. Till next time, we will see you, or we'll, I guess we'll be talking to you later Talk on. to you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye, guys.